Yo, what's up everyone and welcome to the eighth Formula One Grand Prix review on my YouTube channel. Now, as per usual, on a Monday after a Grand Prix on the stream, uh, and then I edit up into a YouTube video as well. We're going to take a look at a bunch of stuff from the Grand Prix weekend, starting off with my race reactions, and then we're going to get into doing, uh, watching a bunch of videos, discussing all from the weekend. Then we do our usual Reddit recap, and then check out everyone's fantasy, F1 fantasy teams, and then check out F1 play as well. As per usual, on a Monday, love doing this shit. But yeah, let's start off with my my live watch long reactions from the uh from the twitch stream <sighs> ricardo just wait how did ricardo get a purple second one and only just get 14th <gasps> wow okay i can't believe ricardo got a purple sector one and finished 15th that's very interesting ricardo oh my god ricardo dude <laughs> ricardo all right, Ricardo out, signs out. Two surprises, I guess. Commit chill, chill. What's he doing? What's he doing? He oh my God, cheeky, 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 cheeky Hamilton. Just overtook like eight cars. Wow. That's a yikes from Lewis. Hate championships on the line, but that's elite yikes. Bad lap from Hamilton. Watch everyone improve. This could cut Hamilton a lot. Oh! Over. Hamilton's gone wide. His lap's over. How many people will improve? Bottas jumps his teammate. Wow. Gasly doesn't get in front of Hamilton. No. Norris doesn't jump Hamilton either. Oh my lord. Can Perez do it? Perez doesn't either. Wow, that's tight. And Verstappen is on pole once again. Shout out Lewis overtaking literally eight cars and still qualify and not improving his time and almost getting jumped by everyone. Dude, imagine if Norris, Perez, and Gasly jumped him. Imagine how entertaining that, how funny that would have been if he overtook all those cars and then got jumped by all of them. That would have been hilarious. Gets Max, good start. Blocking Perez off Hamilton. No, no, Norris gets pushed out wide. Out, no, Leclerc's out wide. No crash. Okay, okay. Oh, Gasly's about to get mugged off. Holy shit. <gasps> Gasly just lost five positions. Uh, uh, Gasly's broken down. Gasly's broken down. Oh, and he just spun around the Haas. Adele for Romeo. Wow, Gasly's out. I mean, still going, but fuck Gasly, dude. Leclerc's got wing damage. Oh my lord, what's happening? Russell 100% going to get points this race with all that damage. Latifi's damage as well. Oh, it's probably debris all over the track. Yeah, Gasly can't catch a break. Whenever he's not getting damage and shit, he's having good races. Uh, oh my god, Leclerc just drove straight in the back of Gasly. <laughs> What is he doing? Uh, the fry jersey is a curse, man. And then Gasly's spinning around Giovinazzi. Oh, not Giovinazzi, dude. Oh my lord, my team's down the drain. Oh, Ricardo's pitted. He's got, he's got an issue. Wait, no, you're capping. No, he hasn't. Oh no, Ricardo's lost four players. Yeah, he's dropping, he's dropping. He's not pitted. He's just dropping back. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, actually, keep in mind, Mercedes had a few engine issues here last season with the curbs. I don't know if it's engine issue, but insides, the, me the mechanics of the car. Maybe if it is an engine issue, that's going to roll on over to the, the McLaren, the Aston Martin, the Williams who also rock the Mercedes engine. The player makes these silly mistakes way off and it's always opening laps as well, I feel. Yeah, it's see, always the opening DRS. laps and there you go, Perez getting, getting past Norris. Wow, Norris leaves the door open for Perez and then doesn't even get DRS. Oh, he's coming back though without DRS. Going around the outside. Oh, it's not going to end well. He backs out. All right, he's smart. He's smart. He backs out. He backs out. Russell in eighth. Guys, this is Russell's day. This is Russell's day. Believe. Believe. I I've changed my tune. This is Russell's day. Wow, Bottas passed Norris real quick. Okay, Norris has an issue. Norris has just dropped five seconds. Oh no, what's happening to McLaren? My fantasy team's going to shit. Wait, Giovinazzi got spun around and he's still in 15th. How? The hard tire is working nice. Oh, that's Great save from Lewis. Holy shit, that was almost bad. Maybe a little bit of dirty air from the harsh, you reckon? Oh, he went in the gravel. Stripe hard tire. It's uh, not the fastest stop. No! 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 That can't be real. That actually can't be real. That's not real. That's that's a simulation. That's not real. And now Perez has a slow stop. What is happening? 4.8. Oh my lord. That is so tough for Russell. He's in eighth place having arguably one of the best drives out of the lot right now. On the medium tires, holding off Sonoda on the softs, keeping up with Alonso on the softs, and his pit stop is an extra 10 seconds. He can still get points, but oh my lord. Can we just, just keep in mind, guys, Leclerc has pitted and on a harder compound than Ricardo, and he's caught Ricardo. What is Ricardo up to? Russell's pit again. Russell's pit again. And Ricardo's, Russell's race is over. Get Bottas is going to get it in front of Perez, maybe. Yeah, Bottas has got Perez. Wow. Oh, Perez might have a good run, though. This is going to be tight into the end, uh, at the end of the straight. 
Nah. He's got DRS though, so this will be interesting for uh for Perez now. Russell pitting again and they're retiring. Sad. F's in chat. F's in chat for Russell. That is very, very sad. He's so pissed. Here comes the Ferrari then of Charles Leclerc on the inside of Kimi Raikkonen. He's going back on him. Back at him again, Charles Leclerc. Oh my. Oh, Did he just get a puncture? No, but he just gave himself a puncture from that. Oh my lord. Dude, wait. Zoe just gave himself a puncture from that. Okay, good, good. Holy shit. Remember when everyone came into my chat and uh, was telling me how Ricardo's back? And I was like, hey guys, remember it's only been one race. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Ricardo back in the bin. What is this? Let's let going for it. No. Leclerc Vettel locked up though. Leclerc should have a good run. Oh, oh. What the fuck was that vibration? That scared me. Oh my lord. I thought he got a puncture. All right, Leclerc's back into the points after that horrid start. Right now, who's your guys drive of the day? The Leclerc, unfortunately, obviously ruining Gasly's race, but to think how far he's come back is really, really well. Signs is doing well as well. At least the car's ripped and that's going to get tight. Oh, they touch, but they're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. Oh my Lord. Wow, Perez has just pulled four seconds out of Bottas. Maybe two stop is good. Here comes the Ferrari of He's going for the move. Wow, nice work. Leclerc up to seventh, starting. Where did he say? What place did he start? Starting sixth, finishing seventh after coming from the back. Maybe the two stops is good here. Yeah. I want to vote the Leclerc driver of the day as a Leclerc fan, but he also made that dumb mistake at the start. And Finally, so Hamilton box box. pitting. Makes sense. Go for the fastest lap. Yeah, Perez is going to have one lap to do it here. Final lap. Here we go. Perez should get DRS on maybe the last straight. The last. DRS straight. At least the last lap is going to be interesting here. Perez is very close. He's going to get DRS for both straights, I think. Can we can we watch Perez? Why are we watching fucking Lewis? Director. Hello, director. This fucking directing, dude. Lewis about to do a faster slap. Cool. He does the faster slap. We don't need to watch it. Can we watch Perez gain on Bottas? Wait, and we're watching it in the fucking mini screen. I'll deal with it. He's not gonna. He hasn't got DRS. He should he is he gonna get DRS on this last straight? Max wins the race though. This car's on track, Max. Chill, dude. Chill. Perez is very close. He's not gonna get it done though. I don't think. One more lap, he would have. He's so close. One more lap, man. One more lap. And Perez doesn't get him. Unleggy. Very tight. Very tight. One more lap, Perez had him. Damn. One more lap, Perez had him. God damn it. Wow. That is probably, uh, yeah, I I'd say that was probably my least favorite Grand Prix of the year so far. I'd probably say that's even worse than Portimao. But great drive for Max. Holy crap, dude. Uh, Perez had that bad pit stop, so that really, really put him off. Perez would have got a podium otherwise. So yeah, those are my reactions from the race. It was a, it was a bit, of, bit of an average race. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't like a Paul Ricard 2019 or a Spain 2019. There was still a few moments here or there and a few things that you were kind of sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for, but nothing really happened. It was a bit of an average Grand Prix C tier, I'd probably say for myself. We've got a little bit to talk about. So let's start off uh, watching the race highlights and discussing uh, anything that we can see from those. So the race got underway and it was super chaotic. I mean, I couldn't keep up with everything that was happening for the first three laps. I did, and we couldn't tell who was getting involved or not. I mean, we now know obviously that Claire was being a bit of a monkey right there. Oh, driving Ryan to the back of Gasly, giving him instant puncture. No safety car, surprisingly, though. And then Lando came back at Perez and got past. That was a very underappreciated moment. Lando and Perez is better on the first lap. And then Ferrari making the quick decision to pit here. So here we go. Here's the incident everyone's been talking about because it's the only thing that happened pretty much the whole Grand Prix. Yeah, I mean, I said on the night, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to say it, but I'd say it's like 80, 90% the Claire's fault, 10, 20% Gazzy's fault. Gazzy did come slightly over to the left, but for the most part, it was just, I, I saw someone refer to it as like the, the same as Kimi Raikkonen at Portugal, but this is completely different. Kimi, like, Kimi had no reaction time. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. This was more of just like a, hello, like open your eyes. It was like, wh what is, what is happening? It wasn't even like he was like trying to slipstream and pulled out late or defending or attacking. It was like, it was almost like his eyes weren't open. I don't know. I generally don't know what the Claire was up to. And then Gasly with no tire, just, he couldn't turn the car. Unfortunate for, uh, for Giovinazzi though. Giovinazzi could have had a good race if that didn't happen, to be honest. It was a really nice move from Perez. Don't get me wrong. But it was very interesting how Lando like, didn't really defend and then kind of just dropped off of Perez very, very quickly. I think the gap went to 10 seconds in five laps. Very, very surprised. I thought McLaren would be able to keep, was going to be able to keep up with the Red Bull and the Mercedes better than this. And yeah, Valtteri got past very quickly as well. And then, yeah, and then they just pulled a 10 second gap on the McLarens. And this is sad. At first, we all thought it was a failed pit stop, but we've then found out that he had a bit of uh, pressure issues. So Sam Collins explained this in the post-race show. There's like little can canisters, valves you got to take off, put air in, blah, blah, blah. 
and if it's a leak you've got to constantly keep topping it up so they would have had to have kept topping them up once every 10 15 20 laps and uh yeah it was in, you know when the it makes the pit stops 10 seconds long and it's inevitable at that point you know so yeah that he just retired super tough for russell i oh, mean he was on the medium tires keeping up with alonso and stroll who were on the softs and keeping off sonoda who was on the softs as well he was having a fantastic race that was pretty much almost probably going to be confirmed points for russell if he, if he kept that up and he was on the strategy that signs and the clear on who then finished in front of everyone so so yeah, Russell would have had a fantastic weekend if, if it hadn't been for that. It's just so tough. But going into Austria next week, he now knows what he can do and he can push even harder. I mean, he missed out on Q1 by a margin. So uh, sorry, Q3 by a margin. So and hopefully maybe maybe try and get his way to Q3 next week. Very, very tough for Gasly. I mean, we're too busy to talk about the Claire causing the issue. Gasly would have had a fantastic weekend. I mean, I think, that, I think this incident here was another reason why the Grand Prix was quite average. I mean, from the Claire's race pace, he would have been fighting up there with Lando Norris. And with Gasly, Alpha Tauri and his performance, he would have been fighting up there with both of them. So this crash kind of just in some ways made the midfield a bit meh. Yeah, but it, it gives us something to look forward to next week. You know, Russell not retiring and Leclerc and Gasly going to be able to fight Lando Norris next week. It, it should be good, hopefully. I mean, Austria is a fantastic track. I, I'm surprised we had such an average Grand Prix there. Anyone saying that next week's going to be boring? I'm sorry, but go watch the last six Austrian Grand Prix. It, it, was, it was just, it was a one-off. It was a one-off. As we see all the time in Formula 1. The Ferrari has got the most is the most inconsistent car on the grid this season. They should have a good weekend at Austria, but with it being softer compound tires, who knows how their car is going to react? And then Perez here, uh, this cost him a podium at the end of the day. It cost him the place on Bottas, and it uh, I mean uh, on track, and then it cost him right at the end of the Grand Prix. And takes off a bit of Kimi's wing. Yes, yeah, so I think what's happened here. At, at the time, I was like, oh, Kimi's kind of gone into Leclerc, but as you can see, they're both heading for that corner. That I, I'd say that's Leclerc's fault, but you can see why he's done it i mean i guess his awareness is so fucking off here this camera angle sucks as well but you can see the players obviously thought kimmy's still quite a decent way alongside him so he wants to like defend going into the corner but he was already passed and just chopped off his wing got a really nice run here that was scary i don't why would it happen here why was his car vibrating so much here i thought he got a fucking puncture look how much he's resting the wheel as well what the hell even happened and then they hit here again bad camera angle so don't know who's fault it is but i think i think it was alonzo's fault that one so all right it's popped up driver of the day driver of the day poll this kind of blew my mind. Now, I'm a Leclerc fan. Don't get me wrong. But for Leclerc to be driver of the day, again, driver of the day means nothing. It's It really shows what the fans vote driver of the day for. It's for who puts on the most entertaining race, not who's driver of the day. My driver of the day is Carlos Sainz. 12th to 6th. Great work. Great work, Carlos. He's the only driver who made up a lot of places aside from Leclerc. Uh, sorry, done that much overtaking aside from Leclerc. But Leclerc had to do it to get back to his original position. Sainz had a fantastic race. For him to not even be on the pole... For the Claire to be on there, who he made a mistake, put himself in a ship position, and then put an entertaining race to get back where he should have. That's not a drive. That's not a driver of the day race. That's an entertaining race. Shout out the Claire for getting back to where he needed to be. You know, you can't take that away from the Claire. I'm seeing a lot of people on Discord, on Twitter saying the Claire's drive was so shit. No one should commend him for that shit. And it's like I don't think he should get driver of the day, but like still, still a good race. Uh, it's still a great race from the Claire. I mean, for him to sorry, not a great result. He could have had. A, imagine if he didn't have that issue at the start he could have finished much better but a great race from Leclerc to be able to come through the field like he did but not driver of the day again entertaining race but he only ended up finishing where he started and it sh he, he shouldn't be doing that he shouldn't be making that mistake then we got Verstappen I guess yeah solid race for Max you know I, I he was a contender for driver of the day for me being able to pull I think it was like 14 seconds in the end to Hamilton before he pit but a lot of it did come down to the Red Bull though as we all know Russell I guess driver of the day was doing fucking fantastic I'm shocked Sainz wasn't even fucking on there Sainz was a clearly driver of the day for me I'm shocked I'm shocked look at Ricardo. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. His car broke down for 10 seconds. Was he able to claw his way back? No, but because Leclerc was self-inflicted, we have to hate on him. Doesn't make sense. This goes for any driver, by the way. Same with Hamilton and Imola. People hating on him because he made a mistake. Dude, give him props for coming back for second. For second place, although the red flag did help him. So I guess we'll talk about this real quick. A lot of mixed opinions on this. I think everyone needs to fucking take a chill pill. That's my opinion. In, in the sense of everyone's blowing this entire thing out of proportion. Plain and simple. Verstappen went up to the side of the track, like other drivers do, to celebrate with his team instead Verstappen before the line slowed down and did a skid right that's the difference there plain and simple Mercedes complained about it 
like Mercedes and Red Bull have been doing for years. And the FIA said, don't do it again. People are fucking blowing this out of proportion. People are saying, Mercedes complain about fucking everything. They're trying to just get any points they can. People are saying, FIA are sucking Mercedes off. Lewis did it here. Lewis did it here. Lewis did it here. Lewis did it here. Plain and simple. He shouldn't have done it. It's dangerous. But don't blow it out of proportion. Don't fucking say Mercedes are doing this and that. Don't say Lewis did it here did it there because it was different for Verstappen. He did it before the line and he did a fucking skit. That's the difference. It's dangerous. He got a warning. That's it. Nothing more than that. Move on. Move on. He got a warning for doing something stupid. Move on. Oh, it blows my mind. People blow this shit out of proportion so much. Blowing things out of proportion. Welcome to the internet. Exactly, media. Exactly. I'm this was tough, man. Wing. Perez, that two second pit stop that cucked, uh, four second pit stop that cucked him. He's chasing down Bottas. One more lap and he would have had it let's do our usual rundown of the grid so obviously verstappen fantastic race he drove once again pretty much perfectly and that red bull is so dominant here i mean to think that red bull has always been good at this track and now they're the best car on the grid they're just going to be even better sam collins actually in the post-race show talked about how in previous weeks i can't remember which week red bull had an issue with their power unit which allowed them to bring a new power unit so pretty much if your power unit has an issue you're able to bring a new one and upgrade it so red bull has an upgraded power unit over mercedes so Mercedes, once they have a reliability issue with the engine, they'll be able to upgrade theirs as well. So that might have been maybe another reason why uh, Verstappen and Red Bull were so strong here. But yeah, Mercedes, if that is the case, Mercedes aren't going to be able to bring a new power unit uh, to next week. It's way too short uh, of a time frame. But maybe at Britain, we'll see that and we'll see if they get any closer to the Red Bulls on the straight line. Apparently, it's a 13 horsepower difference Red Bull have right now. Uh, sorry, 13 horsepower increase they got with that upgraded power unit. Yeah, Lewis P2, I mean, obviously, he was quite far off of Max in the end with the with the fastest lap, but he had an all right race. I mean, I can't tell if it was the Mercedes being meh here or if it was Lewis having a pretty meh race, but yeah, first time we've not really had a championship fight or that storyline between Max and Hamilton this weekend. Like, there wasn't really, like, Lewis never really fought Verstappen at all this weekend, not even in qualifying really either. Valtteri, I mean, we've got to give Valtteri props here. He kept off a much faster Red Bull for the entirety of the race. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that Perez got that, that pit stop issue, but for how far Max finished in front of Lewis... I, I thought Perez should have got past Bottas pretty easily. So yeah, decent drive from both Perez and Bottas, I guess. Could have been better from both of them. I mean, yeah, look how far Bottas is off of Hamilton, uh, who did an extra pit stop. That's what I mean. And like these two, these two to their teammates was pretty big this weekend. Lando Norris coming in P5. I mean, we talked about him earlier, kind of pulling over to the side was a bit, uh, not pulling over the side, kind of like not really racing the Mercedes and Red Bulls was interesting. I think that's more down to the McLaren though. I thought they'd just be stronger this weekend, but yeah, good solid race from him in no man's land and came home with a solid p5 signs p6 my driver of the day coming from p12 i believe it was good race from him leclerc obviously stupid fucking mistake at the start grinded his way back to where he should be so i uh, got those extra six points for ferrari which is good uh in the constructors championship for them stroll um made up a couple places i think finished where he should have uh, to be honest, Alonso again. I don't. I don't know where these guys started the race, but they kind of finished where they started. So good race from those two. Yuki making up a couple of places, I guess, on the retired George Russell and Gasly. So nothing too crazy from Sonoda, considering how strong the Alpha Tauri was here. I I would have liked to have him to seen him beat Alonso and Stroll, but it is what it is. Then we had Raikkonen doing that that alternate strategy. Pretty good race from him. Vettel, a bit of an average one. Now Ricardo. He's my. Uh, he's my let down of the weekend i mean to think where norris finished yes obviously the mclaren wasn't as good as we thought but it was still stronger than the ferrari stronger than aston martin alpine alpha tauri and alfa romeo and to think ricardo finished behind all of those guys was pretty interesting yes ricardo did have that about 10 20 second loss of power leclerc also had an extra pit stop and ricardo was only able to keep pretty much the same place he started even with two retirements in front of him that's a bit that's a bit of a yikes uh Ocon again a bit of a letdown big way quite far off his teammate oh not as much as I thought but still it was a pretty poor weekend from Ocon Giovinazzi unlucky getting spun around on the first lap uh Schumacher beating his teammate once again and Latifi I didn't know that and then yeah typical stuff at the back end Perez drove well man did he though did he though? I'd say it was an average race for Perez. I mean, to think the Red Bull was the best car there and he didn't fight Lewis or Bottas in that Grand Prix. I mean, he should have beat Bottas because of the pit stop, but he should have been way out in front of Bottas in my opinion with how strong that car was. It is time for Reddit recap as we do for every Grand Prix review. So we go top of this week. Let's 
have a look-see if it loads. Ah, uh, Hulkenberg got married. Congratulations. First glimpse of the 2022 F1 car. I ain't gonna lie, when I first saw this, I fell in love. I don't know why. Something in comparison, the drawings and the pictures, I should say, this looks really, really nice. I mean, obviously it hasn't got the fucking huge ass tires on, but like the side doesn't look as bad as I thought. The rear wing looks kind of weird and I still don't like the mud flaps on the tires, but it looks pretty nice of a glossy finish. I like it. I like it. Christian Horner running to avoid being a straight red bull while the team celebrate their French GP performance. We're going to probably get a little bit of overlap from the French Grand Prix with it being a double, triple header, uh, back to back to back, you know, so. Three plays grid penalty for Valtteri Bottas's pit lane incident. Now, haven't talked about this yet. What do I think about this? It was dangerous. Don't get me wrong. It was stupid. It was kind of silly. It was a bit of a newbie, dumb mistake, but Mercedes told him to do it because they wanted to test a way of getting out of the pit box quicker and he gets a three place grid penalty for that and i just feel like a pit lane incident in practice affecting a race shouldn't really doesn't really go together i feel like he should have got a license point some license points for it being a new mistake and the team should have got fined for it being dangerous and just stupid you know what i mean like affecting his race for something that happened at practice doesn't make sense it's kind of a bit of a kind of ruins the competitive integrity a bit i feel danny rings say let's fuck if i had to force f1 teams to slow down their pit stops oh this is big talk from the weekend yeah we watched the tech talk on it i don't fully understand it personally i mean i don't get it they're pretty much fia is saying that teams are putting on tires too fast without checking and it's dangerous but how many times a tire not being put on properly i can remember the mclaren at italy i can remember the haas at australia and i can't remember any others so please remind me if you can think of any so they're pretty much saying it's 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 a waste of uh, sorry it's it's dangerous but it only, it's rarely rarely ever happens now their fix to it is by saying they're gonna set pre uh, a certain amount of time that a tire or procedures have to be done and this isn't just one procedure it's not saying they're not making it like oh you have to put the wheel on in no less than 1.5 seconds it's a micro it's a micro almost a micro sectors for pit stops now so like uh, bringing up the wheel gun, putting the wheel gun on the nut, this, that, and the other. And I don't know how they're going to calculate it. Apparently they, they use uh, high-speed cameras in NASCAR. So I don't know how they're going to do an F1. But the reason for being, for, for doing it doesn't even make sense. If a team wants to be fast and they put it on safely and they're quick, why punish them and make them go slower? It doesn't make sense. How are they going to punish people for doing it? Let's say, let's say Red Bull put a tire on two tenths faster than what it should have, right? Breaking the regulations for this new pit stop rule that's going to come in at Hungary. You're going to punish them after the race? Are you going to punish Red Bull for putting a tire on two tenths quicker than the rule after the race? How does it work? There's no live pit stop analysis with high speed camera. It, it doesn't make sense to me. It honestly doesn't make sense. Merck has told you about Red Bull having the best pit crew. I don't think it has anything to do with Merck though. I think it's to do with FIA just being dumb. If pretty much one thing Sam Collins said is some teams still manually that, you know, the light above the pit stop. Apparently some teams are still manual. So the pit crew, once they put the tire on, they click a button and then the light once all four tires have clicked uh four pit crew members have clicked their button the light turns green whereas teams like red bull it's automated so the second the tire goes on and the wheel gun stops the light turns green and they go out so maybe fia if if enough people enough teams protest against this rule they'll make it so you can't do it automatically anymore you have to do it manual so red bull can't probably do their 1.8 pit stops anymore they'll have to be two seconds because it'll take a little slight few second you know milliseconds to be able to click that button manually uh what it looked like last Last time it rained in Austria. Oh, that is sexy looking. Bottas defends French GP radio outburst. We're not in a tea party. We are in an elite top sport. Exactly. Uh, guessing qualifying this year. P5, P5, P9, P12, P6, P4, P6, P6. Pretty remarkable because he's in Alpha Tari. Yeah, that again, Alpha Tari is such a good car. They've just not been delivering. They've got Yuki Sonoda at the moment. They've got Gazi getting unlucky, make a few mistakes. SPN earned 1.056 million viewers for Sunday's Grand Prix uh, at the Paul Ricard track. The best run F1 race since the 2019 event in Canada. Wow. Paul Ricard getting the most viewers. That's crazy considering how boring Paul Ricard was in the past for that many people to want to watch Paul Ricard. Very interesting to see. Carlos Sainz arriving at the Red Bull ring in style. Ooh. Love me a yellow car. That looks nice. Uh, Lando with the golf livery McLaren and Monaco slash Emma the third place trophies on the latest motorsport magazine issue cover. That's cool.
Uh, we're excited to confirm that Turkey will rejoin the 2021 calendar. We return to intercity Istanbul Park from October 3rd, 1st to 3rd, the original date of the Singapore Grand Prix. So sick. I'm so happy Turkey's back on the calendar after being added, then removed, then added again. Last year's Grand Prix was my favorite Grand Prix of all time. Absolutely love that. Like nothing has beaten it since. It had everything that Grand Prix. Yes, it did come down to the slippery track and the wet, but I loved it. Uh, so I'm so happy Turkey's back. Um, it sucks with losing Singapore though, but uh, it is what it is with COVID. Uh, Russian GP will be held at St. Petersburg Agora Drive track starting from 2023. Formula One is not going to be racing at Sochi in Russia anymore from 2023 onwards. They're moving the Russian Grand Prix to St. Petersburg at the Autodrome Agora Drive. Now, we watched a, uh, a lap, an onboard lap. Uh, here's a lap here. We watched an onboard lap on YouTube. Very, very small track. So now keep in mind, this track is the exact same length. I think it's shorter than the Austrian Grand Prix, but it has 15 corners. This straight is hardly long enough for an overtake. This is, this really reminds me of Zandvoort. Again, we haven't raced at Zandvoort yet, but in the in the F1 game, you can kind of get a bit of a feel for it. This straight, nowhere near long enough for an overtaking. An overtake, no overtaking will be done here at all. This straight is nowhere near. No, never going to get an overtake done here. There's not enough speed to be able to get an overtake done here. Now here, I think this is the only overtaking spot. If you get a bit of a run here on a car, you might be able to overtake here. Barely. And then, yeah, back on the straight. Barely going to be able to overtake here. I say it's like half overtaking spot half an overtaking spot uh, i don't know probably gonna be better than sochi don't get me wrong and it's you know it's mixing it up a bit but yeah a bit of a yikes um seeing this track though i'm not gonna lie so nobody gets a three place group penalty for blocking bottas in q3 yeah pretty standard stuff block bottas on his lap cucked him of that entire lap kind of stupid mistake gets a three place group penalty now i don't mind him getting a three place group penalty although i do think it is a bit tough you know you get a three place group penalty for something you did in qualifying but qualifying relates to the race practice doesn't i don't think bottas should have got grid penalty for what he did in practice but what you do in qualifying it, it, it kind of correlates so you, you should get a grid place penalty although apparently the minimum grid place penalty you can get is three places i think they should make one or two place grid penalties because i think it's a bit harsh three for what sonoda did it wasn't terrible uh dr helmet marco celebrating red bull's win on the constructor podium spot 50 years after making his grand prix debut at the same venue nice i found out that he's like 80 something years old yesterday no how old let me check 78 78 was close i don't know how's this man still in the sport at that age that's crazy so you, so you can keep on master spinning what is this it's it's, it's the master spin <laughs> just boomer dad jokes it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's two of them now it's the master master, ma, ma, master spin right that's uh, the same thing well spinning top yeah so now you can spin you spin this one it's better spinning the car spin this instead of the car <laughs> I can't even spin this. Good, uh, just be good banter and Mick playing, um, not Mick, fucking Mazepin playing along with it well. If Red Bull or any other team except Mercedes win this week's Grand Prix, it will mark the longest streak of races not won by Mercedes since 2013. Wow. Lewis entering the paddock today and start, dude, Lewis got that drift trip. Uh, Toto Wolf, this is the first race really in eight years. We are just lacking the pace. We've stopped developing the car, this car, because we believe for the next years, it is so important to get it right. And they're still adding bits championship over. Oh, what a day for Honda yesterday. Honda wins the F1 race. Honda wins the MotoGP race. Honda wins the Indy car race. Wow. Honda's killing it and they've just pulled out a Formula 1. Flying Dutchman. That's sick, dude. That is actually sick. That would be a sick poster on the wall. Always the same ritual. I love seeing Pierre Gasly playing with his balls. Yeah, if you haven't seen a video of this, his reaction time is insane. Man's so quick. Anyways, let's get into F1 fantasy now. Let's have a look at my team. So, my team this week, 171 points. We've got Norris who finished in p5 we've got the stappen who won the race we got perez turbo driver finishing in fourth we've got red bull who got first and fourth so these guys all did pretty well now giovinazzi was in my team due to budget obviously i had the choice between russell uh schumacher giovinazzi and all those other guys and i went with giovinazzi because i thought he was going to be his teammate which he didn't end up doing unfortunately i thought he was going to qualify well which he did decently i thought he was going to have a good race he got a bit cucked by getting taken out by gasly at the start there so it is what it is but yeah my letdown for this Grand Prix weekend was Gasly. I mean, if he hadn't had that retirement, I think this team would have been really, really good. And I honestly think I'm probably going to end up keeping this team coming into next week. I'm seventh in mine. So I've dropped from fifth to seventh. So Parshant is still leading the league. 
uh, his team for the week was... We're slowly catching. We're slowly catching. He was 16 points less than me this week. Uh, Jackson is still in second. What was his team this week? Oh, he beat me by by eight points. Now, top team of the week. Let's have a look. It was Raining Lemons, but he obviously used his Mega Driver on Max Verstappen. The leader without Mega Driver was was Fever or Ryan. Wow, good work. Yeah, so we got equal 30 second, but F1 playtime. How many did we get right? Let's have a look. Austria, two out of 10. Yikes. No one got 10 out of 10. No one got nine out of 10. 0 0.03% got 8 out of 10. Well, a few people got 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10. The highest percent was for 4 out of 10. I got 2 out of 10. Only 13% got that. 4% got 1 out of 10. Pretty much no one got 0 out of 10. Interesting. Okay. Now, these are my predictions. I obviously got Max Verstappen right first place. Let's go. I, I went for a bit of a out there prediction for the podium. I went with Perez and P2. Yeah, Perez and that Red Bull didn't do as good as I thought. The Red Bull definitely did as good as I thought, but Perez didn't do as good as I thought. And then I was hoping that Mercedes would have their usual issues at Austria. They're throwing a curve out there and I put Lando Norris in third but obviously Valtteri came home uh, in third instead. Uh, fastest that was Lewis Hamilton. I just picked Max. It was really really hard to pick because it was such a short track. I didn't think anyone was going to be able to slow down to do it but Lewis managed to do that. First finish in Q1 I went with Norris. That ended up being the case. First finish in Q2 I went with Alonso but he ended up getting passed by Stroll. So first retire I went with Bottas. I was like again Merck issues. Who knows? Gazi ended up retiring first. Finishes I said 16. Kind of going off of the previous Austrian Grand Prix. I was expecting maybe a crash, which we kind of did get, and a few more retirements than that, maybe some more reliability issues, but yeah. I thought there's 100% got to be a safety car. It wasn't one. And then my guess for the margin was two to four seconds, but obviously with Lewis pitting, it ended up being 20 seconds. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at the league. Who got the most this week? Dungu got five out of 10, along with Fion uh, Kylie, Iridium, and Matthew Willis, and Ardenus. I don't know why his name's Nans, but anyways. And they've got a few people on 4 out of 10, 3 out of 10, and then myself and a few others on 2 out of 10. But yeah, guys, that's going to conclude my Grand Prix review for the Formula 1 Steering Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, pretty of an average weekend overall. Either my least favorite or second least favorite Grand Prix of the year so far. I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's going to happen in Formula 1 and motorsport in general and sports in general. There's always going to be, you know, races that aren't going to be as good as others. It was a bit weird for it being Austria. I mean, everyone, I guess, expected you know Austria to, like previous years to just be absolutely nuts but yeah it's a, it's a bit of a stale Grand Prix but we've got our third and final round of the triple header this week again at Austria this time called the Austrian Grand Prix same place Red Bull ring just because that Grand Prix was bad or average doesn't mean this Grand Prix is going to be bad fingers crossed we can have a good weekend maybe some wet who knows same time same place on the Twitch streams we'll be doing a watch along for all three practice sessions qualifying and the race as well as our usual build up and uh, post race show as well and uh the grand prix review as well next week on a wednesday all right i'll see you guys all there Carry on the battle song. The war's not over the john's not that far off.